And then later on, he, he was doing really well. He got cast as Gearbox's uh, lead in their uh, Brothers in Arms. And I remember him calling me going like, hey man, uh, yes, Troy, uh, how much, they want me to do a commercial, how much do I charge for that? I'm like, you should, you should get an agent. He goes, oh man, I don't know what an agent will do for me. I'm like, just get an agent, hold on one second. And I put him on hold, and I call an agency, I'm like, look, there's this guy I know, it's, it's Troy, he's really good, just be his agent for this gig, and if you don't like him, you can let go. So I call, I call Troy back, I'm like, look, you've got an agent now, here you go. Um, she con they get in contact, and then that's when Troy just starts exploding uh, and moves to LA and becomes the awesome Troy that you guys know him to be. But anyway, yeah, he was. You don't, you don't get a percentage of that. I I don't get any percentage of that. But I uh, if I did, I'd be chillaxing on the beach right now. <laughs> Actually, the sad reality is that while Troy may be the probably the, the foremost like highest used, highest paid like voice actor in the video game industry. Unfortunately, that doesn't that, that does mean he makes pretty good money, but that does not make him a millionaire by any far stretch of the imagination. Because video games still don't pay that much money. And unfortunately video games unlike other types of animation, like if you're on a episode of The Simpsons or if you're on the episode of Ed Ed and Eddie or if you're on, you know, uh, Steven Universe or something like that you're usually getting a residual based on every time it runs on TV. And so you can, if you do enough of those shows, you start getting regular money in for the rest of your life, kind of just to support you. But in video games, it's not like that at all. And there's a huge argument going on right now with the video game industry. Uh, I don't know how much you guys have heard of this, but like the the argument has been that, that I guess the agency is really, sorry, the, the union really wants some sort of residuals like that on video games. But the video game companies are like, oh hell no, we're not doing that. Um, we have guys who work for three years on a game. We're not gonna give some dude who worked on it for you know, two months like a percentage of the game. And, and so they've, re they've been going back and forth and recently they've come up to, uh, the, like, I guess the video game companies have finally decided to take some bad things off the table. But what's funny is it's kind of the ridiculous terms they took off the table, so there's no really, it, it'd be as if you were arguing with, uh, you were arguing with your boss about like, hey, I, I just need to make more money at this job. And he goes, well, let's negotiate about it. Here are my terms and here are your terms. Okay, I'll finally agree that uh, if, you, uh, if you come to work late, I won't cut your fingers off. Like that's, <laughs> That's that's my that's how what I'm and I'm also gonna I, I guess I'll say that we'll take the rule off that if uh, you think about something weird at work uh, we, we can't spray acid in your eyes anymore or something like that like just they had these stupid terms that were in the in the negotiation that they finally cut away so now they're finally just left back kind of where they started so who knows what's gonna happen there sorry uh, I kind of got well off track. After that, I the, everything started spinning out of control. We we're starting to work on Dragon Ball Z games. Uh, at that time, I was I was starting to tour around in the Dragon Ball Z Hummer. Did any of you guys see the Hummer when it went around when you were kids? They they did this Hummer tour where they had this Dragon Ball Z painted up Hummer that had like vinyl stickers all over, it, and they take it to malls and Game Stops and like. Oh yeah, I've seen pictures. Yeah, I'm sure you saw it in some sort of behind the scenes thing or whatever. That was pretty fun because we'd fly into the middle of nowhere and we'd go to like a Barnes and Noble in the in the smallest town, <laughs> and maybe nobody would come to it. Like there maybe five people would be there, and unfortunately they're the five people that you wouldn't necessarily want to be sitting with for like an hour because no. the five most intense people are like, hmm, I see you have a little bit of time on your hands. Um, why is it that in episode fourteen, like the, <laughs> and it, it hurts your brain after a while. Um, do you guys have any more questions? Because I'm just going to keep rambling if you don't. Like, yes. You, uh, you, you were mentioning about the directing. Like, when uh, when people come into audition, what are like the worst things they could possibly do that kind of gives them a leg down? Right uh, the, end of the, the worst things. Let's see. There's a lot of things people do out of sheer nerves, and I can forgive those. I can tell when somebody's nervous. Um, Let's see. The the worst thing people can do are just oh man. I, there's so many things that you can do that are bad in in an audition. But I don't want to scare anybody too much. I, I don't like it when people uh, 
uh, don't just commit to something. They come in and they don't want to actually read it. They're, it's almost like they're stalling for time. And they go, uh, hold on, about this character, is, is he like uh, 14 or 15? You're like, doesn't really matter. Just read, just kind of go ahead and read it. Well, I'll tell you if it's too young or too old. Um, does, uh, do, and another thing that, that we just hate about people when they come in for sessions are people are actors who don't pre even pretend that they care about your direction at all. Um, another thing, another thing, honestly, that can kind of hurt you a little bit. I'm telling you guys this because you are fans. You don't want to come in and be too much. Uh, you don't want to admit that you're a super fan of something when you're coming in for the audition. Like it's it's a little bit dangerous because some directors get put off by like somebody who comes in as a know-it-all and like a. Actually, this says he's 15 on the sheet, and technically he's 14 because in this part of the series he hasn't gone to the. You're like, all right, this guy's gonna be a problem to work with. Um, um, see, people who show up super late for auditions and then aren't prepared are bad. Uh, that's a bad, bad thing. Um, and I can't think of any others right now. So, did you have a question back there? Oh no, you were just stretching. Sorry. Yeah. My favorite quote. My favorite quote um, is what, uh, when that character goes, "Huh?" Do you remember that? <laughs> huh? Hmm. Huh? Oh. Uh, 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 what? Uh, no. Uh, let's see. If you haven't, I've, I used to joke with actors when they come in to record. I'm like, if you haven't done a thousand Hans in your first year, then you have not been working in anime enough. Um, let's see, my, let's see, I love the quote from, um, let's see, every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot, um, is one of my favorites from the recent movies. I like, it's cheese, um, from Resurrection F, which I, I cannot believe you guys kind of liked it as much as I did. I thought I was going to be the only person in the world that liked that line. Uh, but when I saw it in the theater, I'm like, okay, I get it. Now I think everyone's going to like this. Because I thought it was so funny that Vegeta's put in a situation where he's like, he's really trying to focus. And there's two people just talking about, hmm, what is that stuff they put on pizza? That gooey crazy. He's like, shut up! Um, let's see. Uh, the, my least favorite line that I've ever delivered was a line that you can hear online if you want to. Uh, it's the worst, it was a really embarrassing situation. I was playing Piccolo and I came up with this one line and they said, all right, here you go, let's give it a shot. And I said, let's take a look at what the animation looks like. Blah, ah, meh, 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 meh. Ma, ma, ma. It's like, oh Jesus. Um, and they, and the line that was written, it really was in there. It's like, I can do this. I feel great. Yes, 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 oh, yes. It's something like that. Yeah, it was terrible. It's, it was a terrible, awful, horrible, horrible line. And. Uh, and I remember at that time, we're like, should we try something? To I did so many different versions of it, trying to do something better, and it wasn't getting any better. It was just getting worse. And finally, I'm like, just leave it. Nobody's going to notice it. It'll just go by so fast. And, and that line has haunted me for the rest of my life. And it is so terrible. It's, in fact, I, could, I wish I could find it right now and play it, but it was, it's just awful. Uh, other questions? Yes? Did you ever get to meet um, Todd Haberkorn or Vic Mignogna? I've never met Todd Haberkorn nor Vic Mignogna. Um, because <laughs> I'm not entirely sure who those people are. Um, all right, well, um, Vic played Todd Haberkorn in Vic Mignogna, and Todd Who's Edward who? <laughs> oh my god. El Edward or Rick? Which one did he play? <laughs> I, 
If he played Rick, I don't even think that character even existed in the show. Um, let's see. And who did Toad Habercrawl? Who did Toad Habercrawl voice? To toad, toad Candy Corn? He voices Lent. He voices Lent? The Christian holiday or whatever it is? I'm Toad Candy Corn, the voice of Lent. Don't eat fish, you guys. Um, I meant Lent, like a Lent dryer, but Lent is better. Oh, sorry guys, I meant Lent like a Lent dryer. Because when you have all that Lent and it's totally wet, you gotta dry it. Um. I do know uh, Todd Habercorn and Vic Mignogna, um, or as uh, one of my other actor friends calls it, Vic Filet of Tomorrow. Because um, he believes his name is like Filet Mignon and Mignogna put together, so he calls him Vic Filet of Tomorrow. Um, yeah, they're both really, really nice guys. Like, they're, they're both, through. I'm so happy they're finally dating. It's so nice. <laughs> Uh, Tatum is, uh, Tatum's really upset. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, they're, they're a great couple. They, in fact, they've agreed that they're both going to do all their roles together from now on. They're just going, like free. they're just going to be standing in the same room together, holding hands. <laughs> what? What was that? 15 minutes? Okay, because it looked like six, because you did this. Okay, I've got... Somewhere between six and fifteen minutes left. Uh, yes, I'll probably sneeze while you're asking this question. What characters are you most like? What, what characters have you done that you think you're most like in your life? Uh, I've oftentimes said I feel the most like Kuwabara than I do of any other character, because he was just kind of a kind of a dumb guy that just sort of stumbled into doing something really awesome. And I think that's kind of what happened to me, to some degree. Uh, I'm a bit sarcastic, like Vegeta, but I don't carry the constant anger issues with me. Oddly enough, the person who, who has all the anger issues is the guy who plays Goku. <laughs> like, I'm, more, I'm more of the Goku in the Goku-Vegeta relationship oh with the, the two of us than, than he is, because he just gets so... Like, he gets just so angry about stuff in general, a lot. Really, really, really angry about a lot of things. Always <laughs> angry <laughs> about stuff. So, um, but I am kind of like Vegeta because I do like to poke at him sometimes. Do you know, have you, if you had a friend, and it, maybe this is called hazing or something, and maybe this is wrong, so <laughs> I or bullying, but sometimes when he's really angry, I do like to kind of poke at him a little bit, like kind of just mess with him a little bit, knowing that he's angry and just, when somebody's always angry, you can't have any fun with them unless you kind of like, make them a little more angry, you know? <laughs> oh, they're having a moment back there. He says, what's going on? He's like, someone mispronounced Todd Habercorn's name. <laughs> Is that going on the web? <laughs> Toad Candy Corn. 